Hey everybody, Ash here with The Binge with my top 10 spring list 2018 niche style. Just so you guys are aware, where I live sometimes the temperatures can range pretty widely in spring. So some of these are more toward the cooler days, some more toward the warm weather days. And also, just to throw this out there, Realistically, you can wear whatever fragrance you want, whatever time of year it is. Just adjust your amount of sprays up or down, depending on whether you're gonna be indoors or outdoors or what the temperature's like. All right, let's do it. First up, two honorable mentions. I always struggle with the word honorable. First up, Whispered Myths by Imaginary Authors. This is gonna be one of those that I wear more on the cooler weather days, uh, like today. Originally, I was going to film this outside, but it's snowing. I've actually done a review on this one as well, so if you want more in-depth info on this, just watch that review. Some of the main notes here are salvage shipwreck, oud, and cantaloupe. This is one that I wear when I'm usually going to be outdoors, when it's a little bit blustery outside, the wind is going, it's cool, sometimes even cold. The oud is not animalic or sharp here, the melon adds a little bit of sweetness. It's a very unique fragrance. Basically, if you have this, you're gonna be smelling different than pretty much everybody around you because only real frag heads are going to be wearing that. Again, if you want more information on that, just watch my review, but it's a really nice fragrance. It's going to take me to my second and final honorable mention for this list. It's from the house of Penhaligon's Endymion. I actually really like this house. Most of their fragrances, though, are more on the gentlemanly side of things, kind of barbershop type fragrances. This one has lavender, coffee, bergamot, and sage as some of the main notes. Now, going back to that barbershop vibe, that barbershop feel that I said this house really carries across, this one has a bit of that too, which you would expect from the lavender and the sage that's in here. That being said, this one doesn't come across as soapy or old school, whatever you want to call it, as a lot of other releases from this line. It's sweet, spicy, fresh, slightly powdery. It's definitely a comforting type of scent, and I would say it's a lot sweeter off the top than most of the releases from this house. This one also comes across a little more modern than a lot of their other releases. It's something that feels a little more mainstream, like it could pull compliments a lot easier than some of the more old school type of fragrances that they have. So it's something that's gonna give you uniqueness, but at the same time, it's going to fit in with the designer crowd, if that's important to you. Performance is so-so, and they did release a concentrated version of this fragrance, but just go with the original. The concentrated's not as good in my opinion, and I own both. All right, on to the top 10. Number 10 is an Atelier Cologne release. It's one that I've talked about before in a previous top 10 list, if my memory serves correctly. It is Vetiver Fatal. Get a big old bottle of this. Plum, Violet, and Vetiver are some of the main notes here. Big surprise that Vetiver Fatal has vetiver. This one gets compared most often to Byredo Bald Off Freak, uh, which Manny from Cascade Sense refers to as Bay Doll Freak. Bay the Freak. And I imagine he would like this too. It's a fresh green vetiver and violet fragrance with a touch of crisp sweetness. It lasts a little bit longer than most Atelier fragrances. They're not exactly known for their performance after all. And when I want an easy to wear, slightly sweet vetiver fragrance, this is one of the main ones that I reach for in the springtime. Number 10, Atelier Cologne Vetiver Fatal. It's gonna take us to number nine. Number nine, number nine. It's a fragrance that I've reviewed before. So again, if you want more information, just check that review out. It is Inica Idlewild. I like the bottles on these. Cool looking. Cypress fir, tea, and rhubarb are some of the main notes. It's a very green fragrance with a tart and refreshing rhubarb note, very realistic fir and cypress notes mingling along with that. It almost reminds me of a walk through a pine forest on a sunny spring day, minus the florals. It has a sparkling quality to it, it's uplifting, and I really, really, really enjoy hiking. So any fragrances that remind me of that automatically get a boost. And that's just a personal preference. Only real issue here is the performance. It's not that great. It sits close to the skin pretty early on. So you're either gonna have to go really heavy or bring a decant and spray yourself down whenever it starts to wear thin. Either way, fantastic fragrance if you like that type of scent. Very green, piney, almost resinous kind of fragrances. Number nine, Inica Idlewild. It's gonna take us to number eight, which some of you are going to be saying, why is this rated so low? Why is this, why is this rated so low? We'll talk about that in a second. It is Amouage Reflection Man. Kind of low on that. Jasmine, Neroli, Sandalwood, and Pimento are some of the main notes here. And yes, this is a magnetic cap for those of you that are curious. This fragrance I actually took a year off from smelling, basically. It started to get hyped a lot. Everyone was talking about it. Uh, and I just set it aside. And now I'm coming back to it. And I gotta tell you, where I took that amount of time off, it actually smells way better now than it did to me a year ago, or really any time in the past. This one gets compared to Lamal, though they're not really that close in my opinion. It's a little bit closer to Fleur de Mal, also by Jean-Paul Gaultier, but Reflection is better than both of those by far, at least in my opinion. This is a men's white floral fragrance, so that turns some people off. They don't really like the idea 
of wearing a heavily floral fragrance. But to me, it obviously leans masculine, so it's no issue at all. Along with those floral notes, it's a little bit spicy, a little bit woody, and even a touch creamy, which is due to the Oris and sandalwood that's in here. Oris being iris. It's one of the most popular releases from the house, and it's one of the only ones that really works that well in warm weather. So I'm gonna give it some wear this year and kind of bring it back into my rotation after it's been on the sidelines. Number eight, Reflection Man. Number seven, I'm going with the Mancera. This is another one that I have reviewed, so if you want more information, again, just watch that. Mancera Oud Lemon Mint. My wife loves this one too. Mm. Lemon, oud, patchouli, and almond are some of the main notes here, and guess what? Mint is not. doesn't even really exist in here. It's one of my absolute favorite Mancera fragrances, and if you're looking for performance from a spring-type fragrance, this one's got it. This thing will perform, it will project, it will last, no issues at all. There's a good amount of lemon in the opening. There's also a creamy almond that works throughout. It kind of helps smooth out the oud note here. So the oud here is not gonna come across too funky. It's not gonna have people turning their nose up and saying, oh, that smells terrible. Or that smells like crap. That smells like a barnyard oud, fecal and funky. You don't really get that here. Obviously, otherwise you wouldn't wear it in spring. And a lot of you out there would not wear it at all. As it dries down, the vanilla really comes out and starts to be a main player here. That vanilla mixes with amber and patchouli in the dry down. This thing kicks from beginning to end. It's an interesting freshy type fragrance because a lot of the notes here are heavier type notes. So you wouldn't expect it to be something that you could pull off so effortlessly in springtime, but you can. It gets great reactions for me. So this is one that's gonna be really unique as far as setting you apart from people wearing your typical designers. Not that there's anything wrong with them, I'm just saying. But at the same time, being a good people-pleasing fragrance that can pull compliments and comes across as something a little more unexpected scent-wise. Seven, Mancera Oud Lemon Mint. That's gonna take me to number six, which is an Eccentric Molecules release, uh, but it is not Molecule One. My choice and actually my personal favorite release from their line right now, Molecule Two. Most of you are aware, but Eccentric Molecules takes basically one aroma chemical per release and makes that the main focal point of the Eccentric side and the molecule side of fragrances. So you have molecule one, two, three, four. Those are basically centered around one aroma chemical where that's the only ingredient they give. Then you have the eccentric side, one, two, three, four, and those are like a companion to the molecule side. So they again focus on the main molecule, whatever was used on the molecule side, but they have additional notes as well. Hopefully I didn't just confuse anybody. Molecule two is centered around ambroxan, which is most well known in Dior Sauvage. And technically, since this is molecule two, that is the only note listed, Ambroxan. Now it doesn't smell the same as Dior Sauvage or even close. The way the Ambroxan is handled is completely different. It's warm, has kind of a fuzzy smell to your nose, and has that salty vibe that Ambroxan and Ambergris is known for. Very easy to wear, it's a people pleaser, it can get compliments. Molecule 1, a lot of people can't even smell. I don't have that issue with Molecule 2, everybody can pick it up pretty easily. It does kind of come and go in waves though, so you'll pick up a big wave, a big blast of the fragrance, and you'll be like, oh wow and then it'll kind of die back down and come back again. You could also layer it with other fragrances if you wanted to, to give it kind of an Ambroxan feel, but it's great on its own. That's gonna take us to number five, Creed's Aventus, the king. Not that king, the fragrance king. Pineapple, birch, black currant, and musk are some of the main notes here. That is probably the most cloned fragrance of all time. There are niche fragrances that are inspired by Aventus, and there are tons and tons and tons of cheaper alternatives to Aventus. So everybody's trying to get in the Aventus game. And I'll tell you, there are some really nice niche alternatives to Aventus that I own. Cedrat Boise, Royal Vintage, Scent of Peace, BondNumber9.com, Orion, on and on and on. But this year, going with Aventus, the OG. I have loved Aventus from the first time I smelled it from a little carded sample years and years ago. No fragrance can get people more riled up than Aventus. All you have to do to get people pissed and start a troll flame war is go onto a fragrance group or a forum and either say that Aventus is trash and Club de Nuit Intense Man is awesome or say Aventus is awesome and Club de Nuit Intense Man is trash. You just started a flame war. There's not really a ton I can say about this one that hasn't already been said. Fruity pineapple black currant opening mixing with birch giving it a smoky kind of feel. Of course there are batch variations, so some batches of Aventus are smokier, some are fruitier, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. Got a nice ambergris musk in the dry down. Fragrance is a killer. Some people say it's a boxer dropper that guys like this more than women, but I've gotten lots of compliments from men and women while wearing this, so it's pretty split for me. 
one of my favorites, Creed Aventus. Gonna take us to number four. This is another one that's gotten a bit of hype in the community over the last year or so. It is Parfums de Marly Leighton. Not Leighton exclusive. Apple, vanilla, cardamom, and lavender are some of the main notes here. It smells damn good. I have Leighton exclusive. It's right back here. There it is, see, in the little bottle. I actually prefer Leighton to Leighton exclusive. So if I personally were telling you which one to get, I would say this one, personal opinion. Leighton exclusive basically added some animalic notes to Leighton. Uh, darkened it up a little bit, but I prefer the original. This does smell a little bit like a designer type fragrance, only with higher quality ingredients. So that turns some people off. It doesn't have necessarily that massive exclusivity to the scent that some other niche fragrances have. Uh, but in general, the way that I wear niche fragrances, that doesn't bother me. Because the ones that I wear the most are ones that have been copied a million times at this point. But the fact that it goes for a more mainstream appeal does not dissuade me at all. I love it. And my wife really loves it. This fragrance will work in almost any situation. It does come across a little bit cloying if you go heavy though, so I always temper the amount of sprays that I use with this one. Especially if it's going to be really hot outside or if I'm going to be in close quarters with people. Because I get good performance from it. It's got a really nice spicy mix of notes. You've got lavender and apple that really pop off at the beginning. and it down to a woody vanilla base and again I really like vanilla so this thing just works for me it smells great I have nothing negative to say about it it's honestly my favorite release from the house at this point point. and as far as nighttime niche fragrances go these two would be my main picks Aventus and Leighton gonna take us to number three we've cracked the top three number three Rosa Dove Elysium grapefruit black currant juniper and apple are some of the main notes here and this one was a little bit divisive as well Rosa Parfums are really known for ultra, ultra high quality, ultra high exclusivity type fragrances. You know, the really expensive stuff that only a select few can afford. Elysium came out and it's basically the most affordable Rosa Dove fragrance that you can buy. It's very obviously trying to take a bite out of the market share that Dior Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, Dylan Blue, and all the other blue fragrances have. I mean, just look at the bottle. It does come across as having higher quality ingredients than the fragrances I just mentioned, but it falls right in line with them. Extremely hyper versatile, people pleasing, compliment getting kind of fragrance. You can wear it casually, wear it to a date, wear it to the office, wear it wherever, it's going to work. This is almost the epitome of the dumb reach fragrance, which in case you're unaware of what that is, it's basically when you don't know what to wear, you just grab something and go. So you wanna grab something that's really versatile that works in almost any situation. That is Elysium. It gets great feedback from me. It's refreshing, it's bright, it's even uplifting. I can't lie that it's just a mainstream, people-pleasing kind of fragrance that's made for the masses. You don't have to be a frag head to be into this fragrance. It just smells good. And that's really what it's all about. Something that you like, something that smells good. Number three, Elysium. Top two are not gonna be a surprise for anybody that's really watched my channel for a long time. So all of you out there that are already aware of what the top two are, sorry. These are just my favorites, man. Number two, bond number nine, Bleecker Street. I love that bottle, I don't know why. Makes me happy. Blueberry, violet, and oak moss are some of the main notes here. And I'm gonna be doing a full-fledged review on this in the near future, so look out for that. I realized that despite my love for this fragrance, I had never really devoted an entire video to it, so I'm gonna do that. And there will be a giveaway associated with that video. A Little bit of a different giveaway, but I think it's pretty good. So yes, Bleecker Street. A huge surprise coming in at number two. Uh, purple Label by Ralph Lauren does smell pretty similar to this. Performance on Purple Label is not as good. I do own Purple Label, but truth be told, between the two, I will pick Bleecker Street nine times out of ten. Very green in the opening, with touches of blueberry. Some people say it gives off kind of a grassy feel. Just such a great spring fragrance in my opinion. A little bit of a woody suede dry down with touches of cinnamon. The opening, that, that initial blast, that's my favorite part, but I love it the whole way through. Now, a lot of people out there are gonna say bond number nine they make synthetic fragrances that suck and I'm not gonna really argue too much with you there uh, some of them are really bad like little Italy and that one is trash but Bleecker Street for me is just a masterpiece and I know that's a little bit divisive because I've seen online people bicker back and forth about it some people say it's like the worst thing they've ever smelled which sounds like a bit of an exaggeration and then other people will say that it's amazing and they'll kind of go to war. So I know a lot of you out there are not going to agree with that one, but for me, Bleecker Street, hands down. Just like seeing this bottle and then smelling it, I'm almost conditioned to think of spring. It's like Pavlov's dog. I see that and I'm like, oh, spring. Gonna take me to number one. Not a surprise. Most of you out there are gonna know what this is, again, if you've watched this channel for a while. Creed Green Irish Tweed, busting out the 75 mil bottle this time. 
on 120 mils or up there, but I went with this one. I just like that fuzzy label. Lemon, verbena, violet, and iris are some of the main notes here. This gets compared to Davidoff Cool Water, gets compared to Cody Aspen. Armoff has a couple of releases that smell similar to this one. Train is probably the most well known. And just for the record, because it seems like every time I bring up Green Iris Tweed, somebody will comment and say that Cool Water came first, Green Iris Tweed is copying it. So uh, just to go ahead and set the record straight on that, Green Iris Tweed came out in 85, Cool Water in 88. Now I'm not saying Creed has never copied other people's fragrances, because they have, but in this circumstance it's not warranted. This is another one that I got a carded sample for and it just blew me away. I thought it smelled so good, so I saved up and bought myself a bottle. Green Irish Tweed is actually the first fragrance that I bought from the House of Creed. This is supposed to smell like a walk through an Irish countryside, and it does. I mean, what's greener than that? Very green, very refreshing. Many people are actually turned off by the opening of Green Irish Tweed. They think it comes across a little bit abrasive, but I guess I'm weird because I really, really, really like the opening. I like that punch that it gives me right to the face. Hmm, badass. Very green, grassy, fresh, and crisp. To me, even more so than Bleecker Street. Obviously, Green Irish Tweed is gonna come across more natural than Bleecker Street is. Really though, that's not a surprise when you compare Creed and Bond Number no. 9. So yeah, just that initial opening, the Lemon Verbena, really comes across strongly. Some people it even overwhelms. The Dry Down is the Creed, salty, amber green note that everyone knows, a creamy sandalwood and violet. It's just a classic fragrance, timeless even. It can be enjoyed by younger guys, older gentlemen, does not matter, it's a masterpiece. Number one, Creed Green Irish Tweed, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I trimmed my collection down to five bottles, this would make the cut. There you have it, my top 10 list for spring 2018 niche style. Technically 12, but whatever. Thank you guys for sticking around. Let me know some of the fragrances that you're gonna be wearing this spring in the comments below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Look out for that Bleecker Street video coming up probably in the next few days or so. And I will see you guys next time.